Good evening folks, welcome back to the channel. It is the starting 11 prediction for tomorrow's Scottish Cup semi-final at Hamden against Aberdeen. What a week it has been um, since our last video uh, after the 3-0 win over St Mirren. Uh, Rangers have dropped five points. Uh, I don't think MD's seen that coming. A defeat at Ross County last weekend and a 0-0 draw at Dundee during the week. Um, that has given us the initiative back. It's given us the momentum. And now we've got to really take the opportunity with both hands. Um, the post-split fixtures were confirmed on Monday. I'm sure you know what they are, but they're on your screen now. We start away at Dens uh, before we play Hearts at home. And seven days later, we have that final derby of the season at Celtic Park. Saturday, the 11th of May. And the situation is really clear for Celtic now. If we can get maximum points out of those next three league matches against Dundee, Hearts, and then in the derby against Rangers... We'll be just about over the line as champions. We'll be six points clear with two games left to play. And if you'd offered me that situation at numerous stages through this season, I would have bit your hand off. There's been times this season where we've looked like we've almost lost our way. If you go back to Fur Park maybe six weeks ago in stoppage time, um, we, we looked like we were on the brink of a really, really bad moment and, and dropping further behind in the title race. Um, fast forward to now. The, the pressure looks like it's got to Rangers. They've dropped these five points, which is a huge momentum swing. We've got the, the momentum and we've got the initiative back. It's back in our hands. Three-point cushion. We've played the same amount of games. It's just about us continuing the positive uh, performances and results that we've had in recent weeks um, and, and bringing a high level because we've got it under our control now. We've just got to perform in these next three or four games and we will be there. We've got to show that we've got the stomach for it uh, that we've got the mentality to get this over the line and we've seen it in this squad before there's there's numerous players in this squad who have been over the course who have saw through title races who have led in title races and saw it through to the end and won titles we've got to do that again um, it's back in our hands now we've just got to take control of it I'm not one for thinking that that's it done now because we've got this three point cushion if you've watched Celtic this season we've had a mistake in us we've dropped points in numerous games I think we've dropped points in nine games we've had six draws which is far far too many we can't afford another one we've got to take the bull by the horns now um, and get this over the line we've got a brilliant brilliant opportunity um, to retain the title and we've got to go and take it anyway back to tomorrow at Hamden in the Scottish Cup against Aberdeen. Aberdeen haven't been in great form. Um, everybody knows that. They had the whole Neil Warnock saga. Um, he wasn't there for very long. They've eventually just appointed a new manager for next season. Um, I think they've had three wins in the last 11 games in all competitions. Uh, the last two games have been 0-0 draws against Livingston, who are rooted to the bottom of the table, and against Dundee at Pataudry last weekend. Um, they're not in great shape. We've beat them twice this season, but the last game was a 1-1 draw up at Pataudry um, when Paul uh, Levin was in charge. So I think we've got to be wary of their threats. We know what their threats are. Miofsky, um, they've got a couple of good players, particularly in the counter-attack. They hit us in the counter-attack that day. Um, we've got to be wary of that. But I think if we perform at a high level, we should be able to win the game and secure passage through to that Hamden showpiece in the Scottish Cup final at the end of the month. So we'll get to the team then and we'll start in goals like we always do with Joe Hart. Um, you wonder what Joe Hart's thinking because I think he's got a maximum maybe of seven games left in his professional career. If we win tomorrow, we'll have the cup final to look forward to, plus those five league games. Um, a long career. He's been performing pretty well for us in recent weeks. Uh, not too much to do last weekend, but um, I, I hope he enjoys it and I hope um, he's been a brilliant servant for us. He came in at the right time. He, he brought us exactly what we needed and I hope we can give him... The, the proper send-off by going and, and securing a, a League and Cup double. Um, I really wish that for Joe Hart because he's a brilliant career and he's been brilliant for Celtic and I want him to go out in a high at the end of the campaign. Back four, I'm going Johnston, Carter Vickers, Navrotsky and Greg Taylor. I know Liam Scales is back. Uh, he's been training, maybe in contention for, for the squad tomorrow. I'd just like to see Navrotsky get another run. We haven't seen a lot of him this season. Um, obviously, uh, the last time out against Aberdeen, he did play um, and he, he struggled in that second half. He got booked. Uh, he lost the goal one-on-one -on -one with Miofsky, um in that second half and he looked unsure. I think he ended up getting subbed off in the game, but that's not a reason not to start him tomorrow. He's got to go and show that he can step up to the level and deal with these big games playing for Celtic. 
the one thing I thought last weekend he, he was pretty good, but I think there was a situation where uh, St Burn player had it out wide from the right hand side, dribbling into the box, and he looks unsure about his timing, about when to go and commit or when to hold his position. Um, and that's similar to the Miofsky goal in that 1 1 drop with Audrey, where Miofsky gets the ball, he's cutting inside, but he kind of stands off him, Navrotsky, and lets him come onto his left foot, and he finishes past Joe Hart. So if it is Navrotsky tomorrow, he'll have to be wary of that, but that day. We looked all over the place defensively as a team and also he was alongside Liam Scales. Tomorrow he should be alongside Carter Vickers um, if he starts. So Carter Vickers we know has a calming influence on everybody. Really shows up the defence and breeds confidence in the entire team. So I would expect a better performance from Navrotsky if he has to get the nod tomorrow. Now in midfield there's obviously a big decision to make with Callum McGregor's fitness. I've just about put him in. I was going to go with Awata, but I think it's probably at the stage now where we can maybe get an hour, 65 minutes out of Callum McGregor. Um, he's a massive player for us. It's it's a it's a one-off game. It's a, it's a cup semi-final. So we need our big players. Um, he's got lots of experience in this competition um, and in big games for Celtic. So I think that's key. And I think getting the time again, he got a wee bit off the bench at Ibrooks, didn't look sharp. Got more time off the bench last week against St Mern. I think... Given the occasion, Brendan Rodgers might just give him the nod, but as I say, I fully expect him only to get an hour or so because I think they have to manage that situation with his Achilles because it's like a wear and tear injury that's built up over years. I don't think it's going to go away overnight, so we need to be careful with him. We've got these massive league games coming up that we have to get maximum points from, so we need to be selective about how and when we use Callum McGregor, but I think tomorrow he will just get the nod to start and, and the manager can change it later in the game. Uh, O'Reilly and Hatati in front of him. Hatati last weekend unlocks the door for us after a poor first half. Again, we've seen time and time again this season a good half followed by a poor half or vice versa, and that's what we saw last weekend in that first half. We were really slow. I know the conditions weren't brilliant for playing football, but... We didn't create very much um, and we needed something to break the deadlock for us. And Hatati has technical quality to take that ball from Johnston. First touch and then curl it into the, or bend it, sorry, into the, the far top corner uh, with the outside of his foot. It was absolutely brilliant. That's what we needed. Um, we've not seen that a lot this season. We've not had that type of quality so often this season. It has positive influence in the team. Uh, you can see it every week that he, he's come back. Since he's come back, we've got better and better with him in there. Um, and again, thinking back to that last game where we played Aberdeen, Hatati wasn't available, Carter Vickers didn't play. There's been so little occasions this season where the manager's been able to field his strongest team. If you were to sit down with everybody fit, your strongest starting eleven on paper, it's very, very rare that that's played together this season. So having Carter Vickers back in, and Hatati back in is having a huge positive influence on the team and long may that continue. Um, big decisions in the front three tomorrow. Um, I'm going James Forrest on the right-hand side. This is a point Kenny made um, in the full-time reaction last weekend. I agree with him. I think James Forrest, given his experience, given his output over the years for Celtic, is a much better option than what we've been getting from the likes of Yang and the likes of Kuhn in recent weeks. Um James Forrest again at Hamden against Aberdeen. He's got history in these type of fixtures, um, and I think he's calmer. I think he's got obviously got a lot more more experience, but his composure on the ball at times is much better than what you might get out of Kuhn or Yang. I think Kuhn has looked relatively promising, and he'll dribble at players and commit them, but he wants too long on it. He wants to try and take too many touches. He's really indecisive. I think when you get in good positions out wide, you need to have a killer instinct. You need to be ruthless. Um, and he seems a bit hesitant and he's turned the ball over a lot. Yang, on the other hand, every time he gets it, you feel like he's going to turn it over. Um, he, he, he's not he's not careful enough. His touches aren't sure enough at times and he does turn it over. And as I say, Aberdeen's threat tomorrow, I would think, will be on the counter-attack. So we need to be careful with that. Um, and I don't think Yang has done anywhere near enough over the course of this season to justify starting in a game like this. I'm going with Palma on the left-hand side. Um, again, his output is much better in terms of numbers, but equally frustrating when you sit and watch him for, for a 90-minute game. Um, again, at times indecisive, at times too easy to read coming inside on his right foot all the time. Um, had one or two chances last week he maybe should have done better with, but don't want to be too hard on him because he's just back from a, a spell out injured. Um, but I'm, I'm going Forrest and Palma tomorrow because I don't think we've, we've seen enough uh, positive output for the likes of Kuhn and Yang to get the nod tomorrow. My is a big miss for us. There's no getting away for that. I've just mentioned injuries and not being able to field that full, that full strength team all season. 
and then you finally get there just as you're coming into the game at Ibrox and um, McGregor's just about back and then we lose Maeda, Scales has gone out um, you, you can debate whether Scales would be part of that best 11 on paper um, but there's there's another injury there and it is Maeda and he's likely to miss the rest of this season which is a huge blow for us again it's a big factor in that final derby of the season because he's been so effective in those games but tomorrow I think it'll be Forrest and Palma in the wide areas and Keogh go through the middle um, brilliant for him and Ida to get on the score sheet last weekend. I think they're pushing each other. I think Ida's been a really positive influence in the team. He surprised me. There was a lot of negativity when he came in because he was he was like the proxy signing at the end of a really bad window that people used to channel their frustration. Um, he hadn't been getting a game for Norwich. We weren't sure about it. He's proved us all wrong. Um, he's got... He's got much more quality than the likes of O, who's been that sort of physical presence, that different option for us. He's a bigger goal threat than him as well. Um, and I think he's been brilliant for us. He's scored big goals um, at important times for us. There's no doubt we'll see him tomorrow at some point in the game. But again, Kyogo at Hamden for Celtic. Massive goals in these type of fixtures, finals and semi-finals. So um, I'm going with Kyogo tomorrow. Hopefully he can continue his uptick and forum that's the 11 i think the manager's going to go with if you disagree with me let me know in the comments below we'll see you outside hamden tomorrow with all of the full-time reaction thank you